Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at how to work out the concentration for any acid or alkali using a titration. So, the aim for this investigation is to find out the concentration of sodium hydroxide, which is unknown, when you have a known concentration of hydrochloric acid, which is one molar. What we need is a burette, a pipette, a conical flask, and a white tile. So the first thing you want to do is get your hydrochloric acid and you're going to fill up your burette to the top. So you're going to get yourself a filter funnel, place that into the top, make sure the tap is shut so the acid doesn't come through, and you are going to very carefully tip your acid into your burette. You want it to come just above the zero line. And then you need to take this and empty out just a little bit of the acid so it fills up the bottom part here and get rid of any air bubbles that there are. Okay, so once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is to remove your filter funnel, just to make sure that no acid drops in and throws out your results during the experiment. So take that out of the way. And then you want to get yourself your sodium hydroxide, your unknown concentration. So you're going to get yourself a pipette. You're going to use the pipette filler and you're going to take in 10 centimeters cubed. You need to make sure it's exactly on the zero line. And you're going to place this into your conical flask. You then want to take your conical flask and put it onto a white tile. The reason for that is so you can see the color change and you're gonna put a few drops of your indicator in. For today, I've gone with phenolphthalein because it gives you a nice clear change from pink to colorless when it becomes neutralized. Once you've done that, my advice for you when you start your titration is to do a rough titration. So just add it in until your sodium hydroxide goes colorless. So you know approximately when it becomes neutral. So turn the tap, add the acid in and stir it, swill it around just to get all the acid in there and to make sure it's fully reacting. It doesn't matter if you go over like I have done here, turn the tap off. Now I can see that's approximately 12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset up my experiment and I'm gonna start right back at the beginning, but this time I'm going to go down to around 8 mil. So I've set up again, I'm back up to my zero line and I have a fresh batch of sodium hydroxide. This time I'm going to go down to 8 mil because I know it's around 12-ish that it becomes neutral. So I'm going to just add it in, go down to 8. Because I know during this time it's not going to go neutral and then I'm going to stop and give it a swirl. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it in drop by drop until it becomes completely neutral. Again, swirling it so I know the first point that it has become completely colourless. As you can see it's starting to go I've stopped it there. So I can have a look and you can see that it is 9.8 mil. So it's taken 9.8 mil of my hydrochloric acid to completely neutralize 10 mil of my sodium hydroxide. What you want to do now is repeat this experiment until you have three sets of concordant data. So what I mean by concordant is three sets within 0.1, 0.2 mil of each other. So you're going to do that three times, which we'll have a look at now.
Right, now we've carried out the titration, we need to work out the concentration of our unknown sodium hydroxide. So the first thing we need to do is take an average of our results. My first titration had an initial volume of 0, 0.0 centimeters cubed, as you can see here, and a final volume of 9.8 centimeters cubed. So nice and simply, we used 9.8 centimeters cubed of acid. My second titration started on 9.8 centimeters cubed and finished on 19.7, meaning that 9.9 .9 centimeters cubed is used up. And my third titration started out on 19.7 centimeters cubed and ended on 29.8. So I've used up 10.1 centimeters cubed of acid. Now these three, I would say, are concordant. They're all within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 mil of each other. So we can take an average, which as you can see here is 9.9 .9 centimeters cubed. I've done it to one decimal place because that's what I've taken my readings to. If my results weren't concordant, I would have carried on doing the titration until I had three sets of concordant data. Now that I have my average volume of hydrochloric acid, I can now work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide. If you're not sure how to do that, I have got a video appearing in the top right hand corner, which will go through that in detail. I'm going to presume that you know it and I'm going to carry on from there. So I'm going to start off by putting in the information that I know. I know I had 10 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. I measured that out. I also know that the concentration of hydrochloric acid was one moles per decimeter cubed. I also know that it took 9.9 .9 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid to neutralize my sodium hydroxide. Now you may have noticed throughout this video, I've used 9.9 .9 mil, 9.9 .9 centimeters cubed. They are the same thing. So what I need to do is convert my volume into decimeters cubed. And I do that by dividing by a thousand. So for sodium hydroxide, I have 0.01 decimeters cubed and hydrochloric acid is 0.0099 decimeters cubed. I can now work out my moles, which is concentration times by volume for hydrochloric acid. So 1.0 times by 0.0099 gives me 0.0099 moles of hydrochloric acid. And because my ratio between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid from our balanced equation is one to one, that means I also have 0.0099 moles of sodium hydroxide. Therefore, to work out my concentration, it's moles divided by volume, which gives me a concentration of 0.99 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide. And that's everything that you need to know from this video on how to work out the concentration of any unknown acid or alkali. I have got a few questions for you, so have a go at them, pause the video, and then we'll check them in a minute. Right, let's go through. So we'll start off with question one, which is describing how to carry out a titration to find out the unknown concentration of potassium hydroxide. So the first thing you want to do is fill a clean burette with nitric acid. You can talk about the meniscus line here, you can talk about getting it onto 0.0, .0. that makes your answer even stronger. Your second marking point is to remove the filter funnel so that you don't get any extra acid going into and affecting your volume. Your third marking point, use a pipette. Again, it's useful. It's really important to put in the equipment that you used. So use a pipette to put 10 centimeters cubed of potassium hydroxide into a conical flask. It doesn't have to be 10 centimeters cubed. It can be anything you want, as long as you don't go above 50. I would keep it lower, so 10, 20, 25. Fourth marking point, add a few drops of your indicator. I've gone with phenolphthalein because that's what I've used in this video. And then say the color it should go, which is pink. Again, if you use methyl orange, talk about the color change in, that you would see in there. The fifth marking point, add the acid drop by drop until the phenolphthalein turns colorless. Again, you can talk about doing a rough titration first, that's fine, but the key thing is you want to add your acid until it turns colorless. And then marking point six, repeat until you have three sets of concordant data. And again, that word concordant is important. You want them all within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 mil of each other. And then I have got an extra one, which is take an average and use it to work out the concentration of your potassium hydroxide. On to question two, 
So we want to work out the concentration of our potassium hydroxide when we're given 20 centimeters cubed as used of nitric acid and the concentration is 0.1 molar. So your first marking point here is to convert your volumes into decimeters cubed. So divide by a thousand, you have 0.02 decimeters cubed of nitric acid and 0.01 decimeters cubed of potassium hydroxide. Your second marking point, work out the moles of nitric acid. Moles is concentration times by volume. You have concentration of 0.1, you have a volume of 0.02, multiply them together and it gives you 0.002 moles. And then finally, marking point three, the ratio of potassium hydroxide to nitric acid is one to one. So the moles is the same, 0.002. So we can work out the concentration, which is moles divided by volume, 0.002 divided by 0.01, which gives you a concentration of 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed for your third mark. So how did you get on? Hopefully you've all done really well. If you haven't, go back, check the video again, and let me know if there's anything I can help with. I have got a review question for you, so have a go at it. And if you want to let me know what you think the answer is, put an answer in the comments. Hi guys, hopefully you found the video useful. If you did, please click on like and please subscribe to my channel. If you've already done that, please share with your friends, share with your teachers, any way that's gonna help me. I've also got a website with loads of videos that can help you and there's also my latest video appearing on the screen now. Thanks for watching.